Okay, let's discuss now the Norton equivalent circuit. And as we're going to see, the Norton equivalent circuit is something actually you already really know how to do. The Norton equivalent circuit is based on what's called Norton's theorem, which was kind of an independent development in circuit analysis, independent of Thevenin. And this is what Norton discovered. Norton came up with a theorem that showed the following was true. Given a linear circuit with nodes A and B, there exists a transformation such that this linear circuit can be transformed into a current source in parallel with a resistance. And this is the Norton equivalent circuit. R sub n and I sub n. I sub n is the Norton equivalent current. R sub n is equal to the Norton equivalent resistance. So Norton proved that this transformation exists for any linear circuit, except that Thevenin proved this, as we already seen, that this must be true, that for any linear circuit there exists this transformation. where Thevenin's theorem shows that I can transform that same circuit into a voltage source in series with a resistance. Well, obviously, these have to be the same circuit or they have to be equivalent circuits. And in fact, what is the obvious equivalence between the Thevenin equivalent and the Norton equivalent circuit? Clearly, source transformation. So the Norton equivalent circuit is nothing more than the source transformation of the Thevenin equivalent circuit. And in this case, IN must be equal to VTH over RTH. VTH is equal to IN times RN and clearly RTH and RN must be the same resistance. So when you work a problem to find the Norton equivalent circuit, all you really have to do is find the Thevenin equivalent circuit and then do the source transformation. That's it. Now, when Norton did his work to do his theorem, he actually showed a different way to calculate the value of I sub n a direct way to calculate it. And it's worth discussing that very briefly. Norton showed that if you wanted to calculate I sub n, you could do it this way. Take the output and short nodes A and B together. and then compute the current that flows through that wire. Compute I sub SC, the short circuit current. Which turns out will be equal to I sub N. So Norton showed a direct way to calculate I N. There's no reason why you can't do it this way. The book does show examples, but I've always been a big believer in using the fewest number of techniques you need to get the answer. And since the Norton equivalent circuit is simply the source transformation of Thevenin's equivalent, Thevenin equivalent circuit, 
do the Thevenin, my recommendation, do the Thevenin, and then do the source transformation. That's the quickest way to work it. So let's uh, do a quick example of how to find the Norton equivalent circuit. And this will look very familiar. All right, so let's find the Norton equivalent for this circuit, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to first find the Thevenin equivalent. So in this case, I've got I1 flowing through the 10 ohm resistor. That's the dependent source for that 0.1 I1 source, or that point, pardon me, that 0.1 times I1 current control current source. I'm going to ground the bottom node, and then this becomes VOC, and since I1 by inspection must be equal to zero because it's open circuit, it's disconnected on that end, then that means I must also have VOC on this side. And also note that since I1 is equal to zero, that source is just equal to zero too. So I can just kind of look at that by inspection. And so in this case, this node becomes six volts. I'm going to pick a current flowing in this direction, pick the current flowing through this direction because of the VOC. So in this case, I'll go through and write my KCL. So for my VOC node, what I have is that VOC minus 6 over 8 plus VOC over 5 is equal to 0. And therefore, VOC, which is equal to VTH, will just be equal to 2.308 volts. So that was pretty straightforward. Now let's calculate the Thevenin equivalent resistance. And so in this case, for RTH, what I will have is I zero out the 6 volt source. Once again, I'm going to use a one amp source for the source driving technique because of that independent source. Now obviously I can no longer say that I1 is equal to zero. I've got something connected between nodes A and B. And this will be equal to 0.1 I1. And this will be equal, there's my 8 ohm resistance. And so in this case, once again, I'm going to ground this. I'm going to find my VT voltage across the 1 amp source. So therefore, this voltage is VT. I'm going to call this node voltage V1. Once again, pick some current directions. Again, I'm just going with the polarity here, VT. I'm just going to stick with that, although it's not the same voltage across it, but I'm still just going to stick with what I had last time. And in this case, what I will have is for my V1 node, I have that V1 over 8 going out plus V1 over 5 going out plus V1 minus VT over 10 ohms going out must be equal to 0 0.1 I1 going into the node. And then for my VT node, what I will have is that 1 amp plus V1 minus VT over 10 must be equal to 0, both currents going in, nothing coming out. 
I've also got my dependent source variable, I1. My dependent source variable is that I1 is equal to V1 minus VT over 10. And you might also note that you could actually look at this and see I1 is also just equal to minus 1 amp by inspection. You didn't need to do that. If you actually do the math, you'll still get minus 1, but if you actually spotted that, you would have seen I1 is just minus 1 amp. Once again, you solve this, and what you will get is that VT is equal to 12.77 volts, and therefore you have RTH is equal to 12.77 ohms. So there is my Thevenin and equivalent resistance. There's my Thevenin and equivalent voltage. That's my Thevenin and equivalent circuit. Now I just do source transformation. So in this case, I will go from from here 12.77 ohms, 2.308 volts, and now this becomes 0 0.181 amps, which is just equal to 2.308 divided by 12.77 ohms. In parallel with the same resistance, 12.77 ohms, and that's Rn. And this is In. And there's my solution. Now, incidentally, I could have used the short circuit technique. Just for completeness sake, I'll do it. Let's redraw the original circuit. And let's do a direct calculation of I sub n. So in this case, if I take my original circuit, I'm going to connect a wire between A and B. I now want to calculate ISC flowing from A to B. So this is 10 ohms, this is I1, here's my 5 ohm resistor, my 8 ohm resistor, and my 6 volt source. So let's calculate ISC, which we can see by inspection is just equal to I1. They're the same current. So if I ground this, I've got 0 volts at node A, right? It's all now the same node, it's all ground. And I'm going to call this node V1. Once again, pick my current directions through the resistors. And then what I will have is, this is 6 volts, so what I will have for my V1 node is that V1 minus 6 over 8 plus V1 over 5 plus V1 over 10 must be equal to 0 0.1 times I1. And my dependent source variable is that I1, which also is just equal to ISC, must be equal to V1 over 10. And if I solve this, what I will get is that ISC, which is equal to the Norton equivalent current, is not surprisingly 0 0.181 amps which is exactly the same answer I got over here. So you can do it directly. Uh, it has been normally my experience from teaching this class that students who try to calculate short circuit currents tend to make more errors. So I always tell students, stick with the Thevenin equivalent circuit. 
do the source transformation. It's not that this is wrong, but as I said, it's always better to minimize the number of different techniques you need to learn. Okay? So this wraps up our discussion of Norton, Norton's, theor Norton's, uh, pardon me, Norton's theorem and the Norton equivalent circuit. Uh, next time we're going to look at a principle that is a direct consequence of Thevenin's theorem, and that is the maximum power transfer theorem.